Good morning, you listen to FloridaLA.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Bill Greasy, who's the Director of Sustainability Issue and Standards Development with the Tile Council of North America. Bill, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful, Kemp. You? I'm good. I wish we'd gotten a chance to see each other face-to-face last week in New Orleans, as we had originally planned. I wanted to check in with you. I uh, looked at Eric Astrakhan's press event slides last week. He had a section on sustainability. I thought we'd talk a little bit about that. Last week, there was a, an attempt to try to give people some information. It was called Coverings Connected. How did that perform, do you think? Good question. It goes without saying there's certainly no replacement for an in-person show. Right. We took advantage of the opportunity to provide at least some remote resources for the press to get the stories we needed to get out, to at least keep coverings on their minds so that we can hopefully get some momentum going and get ready for, for a strong show next year. But I will say, at least from a press standpoint, I can't think of a previous year where we had so many exciting stories to get out there. Mm-hmm. And so the virtual press conference was certainly a a huge hit, and we had a, more inquiries than normal following that press conference. The stories we had were exciting, and we've had some, some very good feedback following the virtual press conference. Yeah, let's talk about the latest news from sustainability perspective. Before we get into some details, though, would you say that when you consider all flooring types out there, and you consider porcelain and ceramic tile, is it considered kind of the greenest surface option out there? Well, certainly we believe the sustainability story for ceramic tile is one of the best out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, When we say the greenest, it really depends what you're evaluating, but from the standpoint of the materials from which it's made, uh, its life cycle impacts uh, over the course of of the service life of a building. Yeah, I I think when you compare side by side with the tools and standards we've been given to use, you could certainly make a case for tile as the greenest option. Mm -hmm. You know, when you consider that, I mean, one of the reasons that it wins in the end is because it lasts so long, it's durability. So the the denominator on the math is a longer time period. And I guess the next closest category would be hardwood, you know, which sequesters the carbon through its life. Both of those, which would be considered more traditional flooring materials, do well. And as we've said before in slang, uh, tile is really just baked dirt, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Um, You know, when you look at how Mother Nature makes stone with compression and pressure and and the heat that's created over time, really the way ceramic tile is made is kind of an expedited uh, Uh process of what happens with stone. So that's one of the intrinsic properties, for sure, of the the product category. All right, let's talk about the um, EPDs and some of these changes with LEED 4.1. Tell us what's changed there. Sure kind of two separate issues that are related, but I can start with the EPD, which stands for Environmental Product Declaration. What we just released is a brand new updated version of our industry-wide environmental product declaration, again, which is a report of the environmental footprint of the North American tile industry. This is an update from our previous version, which we released in 2014 and expired at the close of last year. Exciting updates are that when we have this new report, um, it's per the updated international standards for making these kinds of reports uh, and based on our updated uh, North American product category rules. Every environmental product declaration has to follow the standards, the rules uh, for that product category, which in our case is flooring. And one of the great things about that is that the way we release our environmental product declaration in the same framework, a similar fashion as other industries who are also reporting to those same rules. There's a slide that had a polar bear on it, and it's talking about the uh, global warming potential of uh, vinyl being two times higher and rigid core being three times higher. Just to clarify, because I think it's an important takeaway, one of the biggest features of the updated EPD following the new rules where everyone reporting to those rules is required to provide replacement impacts over the course of what's called an estimated service life of a building, which in the case of North America rules is 75 years. And that 75-year number is the number being used most commonly worldwide. And so when we take our EPD, a lot of times where reviewers of these EPDs look, they go straight to the section on global warming potential Mm -hmm. and the section on fossil fuel resource consumption. And when we look at our value over 75 years, ceramic tile, um, just as you said, 
uh, we compare that to the report which was released by the Resilient Floor Covering Institute for a number of different flooring, but particularly to, you know, two big competitors are rigid coreboard and vinyl tile. And just as you said, uh, we found that the global warming potential for vinyl tile was two times higher and for rigid core was three times higher uh, than ceramic tile over that 75-year period. And then, of course, as you mentioned, fossil fuel uh, depletion was substantially higher as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's definitely a apples-to-apples apples comparison of two industry-released reports, which are following the same rules. And so how this relates to LEED, which, uh, as many know, uh, is one of the leading green building rating systems used by the design community to benchmark the environmental performance of a building. There is a credit in version 4.1. There has always been a credit in LEED, but the updated credit having to do with EPDs now gives more a recognition of these industry-wide efforts. Essentially what you have is a, a joint collaboration of industry to release our EPD, and any company that participated in that effort, their products are automatically qualified for contribution to the updated lead credit, uh, which gives equal weighting to product-specific, which would be a you know an EPD for a, a brand name product versus an industry average. You get the same weighting in the updated lead version. Uh, whereas in the past versions, you would only get partial credit for the industry-wide participation. And I think one of the reasons for this is there's a huge push from the green design community to increase the number of these industry-wide reports which are available because they provide a nice benchmark for companies at the individual level to assess how they're performing compared to the industry. As LEED continues to evolve and as more and more companies start to pursue their own proprietary efforts, I think you'll see some interesting reports coming at the product-specific level on how they environmentally perform against this industry average. One of the things that came up in this conversation last week was this package, the, the, the full system, the tile mortar grout system, right? Yeah. I've been speaking to the industry-wide EPD for ceramic tile, but let's not forget we also have two other industry-wide EPDs, one for cement mortar and one for cement grout. So we have industry environmental reports for the three biggest contributors to the tiling system, mortar, the grout, and the tile. And so what's nice about that when it comes to lead is, you know, you have a threshold of products, 10 products in some cases, uh, have to have EPDs on a lead project. So if you, just by virtue of speci specifying a tile system, mm -hmm. you're going to need mortar and you're going to need grout, that combined with tile, you get three of those products contributing towards the 10 product threshold. Uh, which is quite a contribution for just specifying one product. Bill, before, before we run out of time, tell us real quick that uh, there was another element in Eric's presentation around microbial testing. Give us an update on that. Sure, yeah. Uh, our laboratory has always, for many, or not always, but for many years, offered uh, microbial testing uh, on the bacterial front. Uh, and so just recently we've taken the initiative to update our lab to offer viral testing as well. And so in light of everything going on, we anticipate health concerns are going to be here to stay for the foreseeable future. Even after we have a vaccine for COVID-19, you're still going to see the need to test surfaces, flooring and countertop surfaces for how viruses and how bacteria survive and for how long on these types of surfaces. So since we have updated everyone on our capabilities here, we have certainly been busy in our lab uh, with inquiries on these tests. So. We're pleased that the interest is there to use our lab for these services, and we look forward to some of the neat uh, results and research that are going to come out in the in the months ahead. Okay, Bill, thanks for the update. Again, been talking to Bill Greasy, the Director of Sustainability Issues and Standards Development at the Tau Council of North America, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloridaLA.net.